Hey, Colors Barbershop, YouTube. Good to see you guys. Been a long time coming. Hey, sorry we've been busy right now. Got my 4.30 in the chair on Monday. And we're talking about uh, different haircuts. Some of the stuff that people's asking for. Could you pull that up for the video guy? Video guy, get a shot of that. The Usher, faux hawk, mohawk, that whole conversation. Uh, for the barbers, we've been doing, been doing traditional cuts. Relax, we got you. Stay tuned. We're going to go in on this faux hawk, usher type cut. I'm going to show you some real practical, easy ways to set it up, get your success there so you can make your money. All right. First thing we're going to do with the clippers on the open five position, we're going to set it up. Just like we did in our fade tutorials, but this time we're going to go right around the shape of the ear. You see how the ear is round? We're going to make ourselves a nice circular shape and this is just going to be to create our baseline. Okay, a couple things that's real important to me is to make sure you keep this area nice and dark because you're going to need that for your lineup to show, a little dark, show up a little darker around the edges and fade this way. Okay, another thing, when you're doing that initial setup for your baseline, make sure that you look at the distance from that baseline to the ear. If I come too far here, it just went from a Faux hawk to a mohawk. Don't ask me. They make up the names. Uh, we're following the trends and occasionally we're setting some trends, right? So in all essence, a mohawk or a faux hawk is just a wider mohawk. And again, there's a million and one variations of it. YouTube it, uh, tweet it, Instagram it. Uh, study your craft. Right? And of course, I like proportion. I like even haircuts. So whatever we do on the left side, just like a math problem, we're going to do on the right side. There's our initial setup. Looks weird, looks strange, looks real scary for those beginners. When I first started doing these haircuts, I made that initial baseline and said, wow, how the heck am I going to blend that in? Just relax and just know it's just a baseline. Okay. Same thing other side. Again, we're coming here. Just before I get up to that, uh, one of my students, he'll like this, Nick. TPP, that temple peak point, the top of your C. That's like a textbook term, just in case you wonder. I had no clue it was in the textbook, by the way. But anyway, just before we get there, we're going to start to curve backwards so we can, again, reserve that nice dark outline. Nice round shape. And just around the back, we're going to curve it out. Another thing I want to make sure I do is be mindful of the back here. You see where this starts to curve? I'm going to need to put a line down here, either square or round it off, so I'm going to need all this to stay dark. Again, if you make that mistake and take that off, which most beginners do, and again, I'm talking to more beginning barbers or barbers who are beginning to uh, take that journey and go ahead into some of the more trendy haircuts, and eventually, if you're doing some of the trendy haircuts and you want to really start to master them, pay attention to the detail. This area needs to stay dark. If you cut that off, now you're more off into the Mohawk area. Okay, so you want to keep a nice back line. You'll hear terms like the South of France, you know, uh, wider Mohawk, and all that. It's almost like a mullet, like a black guy's mullet. Fade on the side, the back's full. All right, notice I'm taking a lot of time to make sure that that initial setup's nice and smooth. All right, but there it is. Not rocket science. Uh, now it's just a matter of fading, okay? Well, the, the difference in between a fade, taper, soft fade, high fade, ball fade, high and tight ball fade, low dark fade is all in the positioning of your initial baseline or your guideline. It's still fading or blending, which means just strong variation from dark to light, transition from more hair to a little bit of hair or no hair, okay? So again, I did that on the open five. I'm gonna count down. If we were using Andis Masters, there's five notches. Five, four, three, two, and one. In this case, it's all the way open. You have all the way closed and something in the middle, okay? All right, so all the way open, we did here. Okay, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna stop just a little bit beneath that baseline. I'm gonna close my clipper halfway and come up only about halfway. Okay. Very light hand, let the clipper do the work. Your machine is meant to cut hair. You're just guiding the machine, okay? Machine, in this case, is your clipper. But you, if you look close, you can almost see a tad bit of transition. It ain't going to be as evident, okay, with this uh, bottom fade. And so now I'm closing it. We went open. We went middle. I'm closing it now. 
very light hand. You notice I'm just using the corner of the clipper. And the rule there is when going around the corners, use your corners. Right, just like you'll hear us when we're doing uh, detail work with our trimmers. Same thing with your fade. The only reason why we're using the corner of the blade is to prevent taking off too much. Okay, you got a wide blade, lot wide flat blade trying to squeeze in the corners. Right. Safest thing so you don't take off too much hair is using it. Right. Repeat that same thing on this side. Again, we were open five. I owe him a halfway clipper, halfway close. And again, that's just establishing the fade beneath that baseline. Then we're going to go work on the baseline itself. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is um, just focus on that transition, that line, we want to transition, excuse me, that line out, we want to keep all of the length here. Once we put a nice blend here, it's going to actually make this turn into a style, it's going to insinuate a rough look there, but you have a nice smooth taper on the side, okay. Uh, cameraman can swing around quick, a couple tools we're using, really basic stuff, we don't need that, we'll put that up. All right, just a uh, single out guard. I'm using Speedo guards, which is, I'm a fan of those guys. Uh, we're using a 316th and a 116th. 316th, their terminology, the textbook's going to say blade identification, which is fancy language for the markings on the side of the clipper that determines the size. Okay, uh, the marking, this is a zero out. You'll see one zero there. The language is out. It just means that it's going to um, leave the haircut at 316th of an inch. But it's not going to say it here, it's going to say it on the package before you buy it. So if you're just beginning or you're transitioning to these guards, make sure you look at the package and study. Study your craft again, make sure you know your links. If I ask you for a 16th guard and you hand me this, you're wrong. <laughs> you got it? Okay. All right, so we'll start with our 316th transition down to our 116th. I'm going to do this in a closed position. Okay. What I'm going to do now, just to make my fading a lot easier, I'm going to go right over where we want our fade to sit. See how smooth that is and easy just by going with the grain? It almost faded itself. That was two seconds, right? Okay. This is a key move. A lot of guys that I, or students I've helped teach, barbers in the industry, whether uh, they're already licensed or just beginning to get it licensed, they skip this move. And what happens is they tra they're trying to transition their fade and they end up chasing that fade up. And before you know it, they wanted the fade to be here. And before you know it, they're here. They didn't take the time and just smooth that hair out. Okay. With the grain here, we'll be fair. Obviously, do both sides that way. Okay, and what that's going to do is just cut that extra length off. That'll be uh, in our way at the end of the haircut if we're not careful. Okay, another thing I'm going to do is break my haircut down into sections. Any of those video, old videos that you've watched, just breaking your work down and not trying to tackle too much at one time. I'm going to tilt it back here. This is cool. Even when you're setting your baseline up, we set up the whole right side and we set up the whole left side. Okay. What I'm going to do is make myself an imaginary line here, Okay. which really divides the left side of the haircut, right side of the haircut, imaginary line here. Just in my brain for organization, uh, organizational purposes for proportions so that each side matches at the end of the haircut. Those things need to take place prior to you even starting a haircut. Just get organized, okay? Now I can break this side fade down, opposed to say, wow, I gotta fade, I gotta do a faux hawk on the left side, and it's gotta somehow, some way match with the right side. I'm gonna break my work down. When I fade the left side, I'm gonna break it down to, I'm gonna fade the front part of the left. You got it? Okay. I didn't, I didn't do that as clear as I wanted to, but hopefully that helps somebody. Take your work and break it down. Same guard, five, four, three, two, one. We we came straight down, just to make our work a little easier. The hair grows this way. I'm gonna go five or open clipper, just on that front portion of the right side. Okay, I'm not concerned with the whole thing just yet. 
I'm going to close it halfway. Okay. And then we're going to close it all the way. Again, I've got a 3 16th guard, single out guard. It's equivalent to a number two. If that confuses you, take your time and compare your red guards, which are regular like Andis guards, wall guards. Okay. And you can see, this is what our first guard, this is almost like a number two guard. It almost faded the whole thing by itself, right? I'm not going to move too fast, too quick. I'm going to take my time. i got a road map, method to my madness. Okay. All right. Once that's been done, don't worry about the bottom half of the fade because we got another guard to go, and we also can use some clipper and comb. What do you think I'm going to do now? Exactly. Open it back five. All right. Back to the drawing board. Just catch the edges of my next section. This was quarter number one. Now we're moving into quarter number two. There'll be two more sections on that side that look identical. All right. You notice the change in the position of my clipper. I'm here. On this side, I had to fade this way. The hair grows down. I want to make sure I pick the hair up and cut it, So, which means I need to cut against the grain or against the direction. Once you get to this point, you should be able to relax. Self-esteem should go up a little bit. Uh, the fear of doing a faux hawk has just went away, right? It's almost looking like my man Usher. Shout out to Usher. I don't know, I forget who's cutting him. Is that Curtis Smith? I think. Shout out to Curtis Smith, Exotics team, all those guys in the industry doing big stuff. Faux hawk almost done, right? Flip it around, right side. Okay, open five. Back to the drawing board, always, fundamental. Open five. LeBron James is back in Ohio. Everybody's feeling good. So that means I can talk about him or the weather and know that I'm not going to screw this haircut up. So it's all basics. Okay, the middle one, we own the closed one, right? Another key thing is, opposed to holding your clipper flat, this is flat, this is on the edge. Ride your bottom corner of your clipper blade and what it does it's going to allow that fade to happen but it'll give a little bit of an angle it's going to help with your transition from dark to light you can see that small section see how that almost fades itself this is a wall senior clipper that i'm using That's some of the average questions i see you guys ask on the youtube um, here's a question to you guys what was the name of the guards or how were they shaped that we used for those barbers who grew up cutting hair in the basement it was a wall clipper, but what was the name or shape of the guards? Okay, I'll leave that out there. Maybe one of you guys will text me back and answer. Again, that was the Home Pro Clippers that we used uh, growing up Kmart. Uh, there was, wasn't even a Walmart. I'm 37 years old, so cheap Home Pro Clipper, but they had two really cool guards in there. I may try to see if we can get some of those. It helps you with your side areas. All right, again, I just used my open five. I was running my mouth and talking. I used my middle, and now we're finishing up with our clothes.